All right, thanks. Uh, so yeah, my name is Heng Hu. I'm a master's student here at this university. And my presentation, just a more catchy title, is Quest for the Unholy Coding. The effect of electroless nickel plating parameters on porosity in nickel-coated anodes for zinc air flow batteries. Oh, goodness. So I'm sure the first question you have is, what is a zinc air flow battery? They are somewhat similar to a fuel cell, where a fuel cell uses pumps a fuel to the electrodes to generate electricity. Our battery pumps a fuel, which is zinc plus KOH or potassium hydroxide to the cell stack, which undergoes this overall discharge reaction. This produces power to the grid and the spent fuel, which is now zinc oxide plus KOH is returned to the fuel tank. And when you want to recharge the battery, the uh, spent fuel is pumped into a regenerator, which takes power from the grid undergoes this overall reaction and regenerates the fuel, which is then put back in the fuel tank. And now your battery is ready to be used again. Now the regenerator uses nickel anodes to catalyze the oxygen half reaction. I didn't show it here for simplicity's sake, but it's involved, it's the reaction that generates this. But the problem with nickel is that it's an expensive material and it's also difficult to machine. So if you want your battery to have very high power output, you need a lot of these nickel anodes. So that increases cost, increases uh, manufacturing complexity. So you can have an alternative instead of using magnesium. Magnesium is cheap, it's easy to machine. And if you put an electroless nickel phosphorus coating on it, it behaves as if it was made out of solid, uh, solid nickel, sorry. And in this way you reduce cost and overall manufacturing complexity. So you have a nickel coating now, but why do you want to avoid porosity in it? Uh, most of the nickel coatings we analyze have a copper strike layer that is improved to improve, uh, improve adhesion between the nickel and magnesium. When you have porosity, these introduce channels that allow the 11 molar KOH as part of fuel to get down to the copper strike layer, which corrodes it, and also the magnesium substrate. When this corrosion happens, the nickel layer on top becomes unsupported and it can break off, which then exposes even more copper to corrosion which increase, leads to even more nickel breaking off. And you need that nickel layer for catalyzing the oxygen half reaction. So when you have the lamination, your battery doesn't run as well. So that's why you need to avoid porosity. We have actually observed this experimentally. So here's a coatings cross section. You can see a lot of these dark dots here. These are the porosities I've been talking about. And in this EDX map, you see that there's almost no copper left in this region. That's because uh, the KOH has gotten down to the copper strike and corroded it away. And where you, you see where the copper strike is missing, there's some very obvious cracking in the coating. And that's what happens when that coating becomes unsupported and it's quite brittle, so it can't, it just cracks. So that's why you need to avoid porosity in these coatings. So in my work, we analyze the plating parameters and their effect on porosity. The first parameter we looked at is the sandblasting grid size. The, the grid size of the sand blasting you use will determine how uh, smooth or rough the magnesium surface is when you sandblast it before coating. We also looked at the coating thickness, the nominal nickel phosphorus coating thickness, whether or not even adding a copper strike improves porosity or decreases porosity, and also the phosphorus content in that nickel phosphorus coating, as this affects the mechanical and chemical properties of that coating. To actually characterize the porosities, we uh, made these circular dimples that looks like this. They're kind of bowl-shaped and it goes down to the magnesium substrate in the center. And then we took images of these in the in optical microscope camera. And then we carefully counted the pores and measured their sizes. So this is one pore here. And if you looked at a cross section of these coatings, the pores would look like this. So that's how we uh, characterized our pores. And shown here are correlations. So we looked at the pore density as in number of pores per dimple area, and also how much area of each dimple is taken up by pores. So for sandblasting grid size, the higher the grid size or the smoother the magnesium surface is after sandblasting, the lower the porosity. For nominal coating thickness, the thicker coating is, the lower the porosity. Copper stride presence and phosphorus content are a bit more mixed. So in summary, in my work, we analyzed four plating parameters and their effect on coating porosity. And we found that sandblasting grid size and nominal coating thickness, when they're both high, 
have the greatest effect on reducing porosity. And in our future work, we would like to correlate these results with some electrical, sorry, electrochemical testing, because corrosion is an electrochemical process, and this would allow us a two-pronged approach into this issue. And lastly, I would like to thank Zinc 8 Energy Solutions, NSER, and the University of Alberta Energy Systems Group for sponsoring my work. Thank you. Are there any questions?